My name is Jonathan Goforth. Thanks for watching today's video. We're going to talk about what you can do as a realtor when the market shifts, when it fluctuates up and down, and how you can react to it. There's a lot of things that are in your control as to what you can be doing. So if you're a newer agent, you're used to a seller's market. Maybe you're brand new, you haven't sold anything yet, or you've sold less than maybe 10 houses. I've been a full-time realtor for 25 years, a long time. I have been through uh, market corrections, a market crash, the, mar the crash of 2008 and nine and 10 and 11. Uh, and then it corrected pretty hard back in 2001 after the World Trade Center got hit. Um, and it, it shifts down and it shifts up and it fluctuates throughout the year. You know, many times the spring market is the busiest season for most of the country. And the slowest season each year is typically December for most of the country. And so we're gonna talk about the shifting market, what you can do. We're gonna talk about where we're probably headed, what's going on right now. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and please give this video a like. Let's jump right into this. So when I was new, Back in 1997, my, my first year getting licensed, 25 years ago, uh, the market was great. And then we came into 2001, World Trade Center, Pentagon, they got hit. And we went into a very uncertain uh, economy, a lot of fear. There were a lot of stimulus packages being sent out there. Interest rates dropped like crazy. And that spurred on a very strong housing market that turned around quickly. That was a correction back in 2001 and 2002. That lasted about 18 months and the market turned around and it uh, corrected pretty quick. And then we went into 2003, 2004, the market is now peaking in 2005 and it peaks in 2006. 2006 was a remarkable housing market. And then a lot of what was causing that were the loan industry giving out loans that they shouldn't have been doing. And so it collapsed in 2007 and then started really going down in 2008, 2009. It hits the bottom in 2010 and it holds there as a crashed market. I don't believe we're going into that again. There, we'll talk a little bit about that as we talk about the shifting market and what you can be doing as a real estate agent to protect yourself how to thrive during this. So I've been through this. I say all that to tell you I've been through this and it shifts down and you'll hold there a little bit and then it starts shifting back up. The S, we're gonna, this is our topic for this week. You know, we're looking into July now. And so this week in my sales office, my real estate office at Keller Williams Platinum Partners, uh, we talked about this. And so I wanna thank Natalie Hartman for this information going to cover it kind of in my own words here. I'm going to tell you what the words uh, can can become meaning for the S and the H and, the, and we're going to go down this way to give you some confidence and to help put together a plan. The S, this is, we're going to call this strength. And in this, we're going to talk about what are your strengths? What are my strengths? I have strengths. I'm good at certain things in real estate. I'm not so good at certain things. You will be good at other things compared to other people. And so you need to know what are your strengths. I want you to identify that. Now, if you're brand new, you may not know that yet, but you're gonna find out pretty quick as you start selling homes. Maybe uh, one of your strengths is you are great at open houses. You've been successful in the past with open houses, I am a rock star at open houses. I love them. They work. They still work. Uh, people who say they don't work, they either have no clue how to do a good open house or they're holding the wrong house open um, because you need a good house that's going to bring in good traffic. You will have strengths. Maybe your strength is uh, you are great at communicating, marketing yourself to your circle of influence, your sphere of influence. 
I've got videos on that one topic. At the end of this video, I'm going to put a link to how to create a name list. Because if you don't have one, uh, that's going to be your number one homework assignment. It's putting a name list together for a COI list. You have strengths in this business. You're going to have weaknesses in this business. I don't enjoy making cold calls. I don't enjoy that. I'm not good at that. I've done it, but that's not my strength. There are agents on my team who love making calls. They buy leads. They are rock stars when it comes to working leads effectively. We'll talk about that, and maybe that's a strength. Maybe you are great at, at buying leads, getting lead sources, and turning those into clients. Learn what your strengths are because you're going to need to know that in a changing market. H is for habit. Now, habit. You need to have some habits, a very strong work ethic in real estate. Uh, I took a class yesterday, and the topic of that is we are not really real estate agents. What we are is social media experts who happen to be doing real estate. And so you need to be good at social media. You need to be good at marketing yourself. You're a marketing expert. That was actually my degree in college. I graduated with a degree in business with an emphasis in marketing. I love marketing. I love advertising. I am the product. If you're a real estate agent, you are the product. You don't sell houses. You sell yourself. The houses sell themselves uh, with all the tools that you have to help market them. But you, as the real estate agent, you are the product. Because otherwise, the client will just go find a different realtor. Um, habit is, I'm going to call this consistency. Consistency is the big secret to real estate. And so, if you are taking notes, consistency. And it's not just true with real estate. It's true with uh, losing weight, going to the gym. You have to be consistent in what you eat, how much you eat. Um, the habit that you're going to create of being consistent. Um, don't go get fast food. You cannot be in the habit of going to eat fast food all the time and expect to lose weight. Those work the opposite. Same with real estate. If you are not focusing on your strengths and using those strengths in your real estate career and making those a habit of consistency, you're not going to succeed in this. But if you are consistent in using your strengths, uh, maybe you are just great at uh, working your name list. You are great at sending mailings. You're great at sending newsletters. You're great at contacting your sphere of influence consistently over and over, and you're in the habit of already doing that. Now, if you're brand new and you haven't done this very long, then you're about to explode. And we're going to talk about that. But know your strengths to build the habit. So as we go into the next two points, I want you to subscribe because I have other videos coming out there that are going to help you as a new agent or even an experienced agent, get through this successfully. And I'm going to tell you why at the end when we get down to T. Um, and please give this video a like because it encourages me to make more videos. <laughs> Intentional is I, and focus is for F. These kind of go hand in hand. But we need to talk about these because this is why most agents fail. They are not intentional at all, and they never, they never focus. They don't know what to focus on because they don't know what their strengths are. They don't even have a plan. You realize most realtors do not have a written down plan as to what you are gonna do over the next month, over the next week, over the next six months. Now I will tell you, the real estate market is gonna be pretty rocky for the next 18 months. Here's why, here's what's going on. So it, we're coming up on July. Just six months ago in December, we hit interest rates near record lows at two and three fourths percent. That was just six months ago. At the end, coming into the end of 2021, interest rates were that low. Now, as of last week, our rates are fluctuating around six and a quarter. This is the current rate. Right now is around six and a fourth percent. It's not a horrible rate. 
if you were coming down to that. But when you were coming up rapidly, we have never, ever seen rate increases in history. So many rate increases so fast going from in the upper twos to over six. And I tell you what I'm hearing, we're not done with that. So by the time you are watching this, we could see rates higher than that for a while. Now, I think what might happen, because it's a midterm election year, maybe, hopefully, after we get through midterms, maybe rates will start declining off of this. But if we hit seven or eight, it's going to have some impact because it's coming up too fast. Now, you can't do anything about that. This is just the way life is for me, for you, for every realtor in the country, for every buyer, every seller. This is just how it is right now. I'm not the president. You're not the president. We don't get to make choices and decisions. But what they should have done is start raising these rates last year slowly so we don't jump so rapidly because now what they've done in the last week, two weeks, they have started really shutting down a lot of the market due to fear. The media is feeling that. And we're going to talk about why you should not be afraid. Don't be afraid of this. We're going to talk about that in T down here. Don't be afraid of this market. You can't change it anyway. What you can control is this. Now I would say you can control a lot more of this than you think. So if you're nervous, maybe you've been a realtor for years like me, and you've had a wonderful career like me. I mean, I've been in Forbes magazine for the last three years. A huge honor to be listed in Forbes magazine. But here we go. The market's changing. Now, for the last three years, we've experienced a seller's market. What is a seller's market? That means the sellers have control of the market. There are few listings, not much inventory. So when a seller lists their house, the seller owns the house. It's their listing. They are selling their house and they are called the seller. You also have the buyers out there, which there's lots of them. And they are fighting over very few homes on the market. For a lot of 2020 and 2021, we operated at a record low inventory. Never before. I've never seen a market like this. I've never seen a seller's market so strong. Uh, so as of right now, this week here in the Midwest, in the Kansas City market, so I'm licensed in Missouri and Kansas, got my broker's license in Missouri, and I'm with Keller Williams Platinum Partners. I say that to keep real estate commissions happy. I have never seen a seller's market this strong. The last two or three years have been easy for all of us who tend to get more listings. It's been easy. You're going to sell it the first night. Life's exciting for the homeowner. They're going to get more money than they ever thought possible. But it's horrible for the buyer. In this kind of situation, it's not good for anybody in the real estate market. Because now, the wild and crazy appreciation we've seen for the last two years will slow down. It's going to slow down. It will probably decline a little bit over the next 18 months. Now, that's called a correction. It's not a crash. A correction is a slow decline, just a little bit of a decline. Maybe 10% off values, 15%. That's a correction. A crash is devastating. A crash, and you're hearing, oh my gosh, the market's going to crash. Everybody's saying the market's going to crash. Don't buy a house right now. It's going to crash. We're going into the worst depression ever. Don't watch CNN. That's what you're going to hear. That's what I heard earlier today, watching the news. Get ready because inflation is out of control. We've got a president that's not making great decisions. And it's going to be in for a horrible, horrible mess for the next year and a half, two years, maybe longer. It is going to be rocky because these things are changing rapidly. This has been climbing much faster than expected. I can't believe. You know what happened here earlier in June? Um, in the inflation report came out. So the, the Fed was already going to meet and raise interest rates. We all knew that. They had built that in. Uh, everybody knew rates were about to come up again. I think we're probably figuring a quarter, maybe no more than a half. But a couple days before that Fed meeting, uh, the 
inflation report came out that was so much worse than expected, saying inflation is much higher than expected for the June report. And so the Fed raised the rate by three-fourths of a whole percent. That was the biggest one-time rate increase since back in the 90s. That's what we're going into. Now, what will that do? A lot of buyers who you have been working with who have been, say, they're pre-approved for $300,000. They got approved for a loan, I don't know, maybe three or four months ago. You've been showing them houses. They are probably no longer approved for $300,000 because of the difference in the interest rate. Now maybe they're approved for no more than two sixty. dollars So make sure they or you contact their lender and see what they're really pre-approved for now because you might have to lower the price range they are looking at so that they still qualify to buy the house. That's one of the big things that this will impact the buyers. It's gonna be a fun market, but there's things that you can be doing. So you as the realtor, remember what you need to be a successful realtor, to have a really good career. You need buyers and you need listings. You need sellers. Sellers and buyers, that's all you need. And so this is going to talk about how you continue positioning yourself to do that. What do I do? Now, you need to be intentional and you need to be focused. Intentional. There's a lot of things that come into this. If you are getting a listing over the next few days, you need to be very clear with your seller, our market's changing. Now, they're going to know this. <laughs> if they're watching the news, as most people are, they know the stock market has dropped significantly since the beginning of the year because of inflation. The housing market is changing. There's a lot of things going on. All you have to do is go to the gas pump. It's significantly higher than it was a year ago. But you need to be intentional in the conversation so you set a very clear, accurate expectation. Is the market going to crash? You know, nobody can really predict that. But there is no evidence right now that it would crash. It would take something much more catastrophic than that. That's just going to cause a correction. It'll slow the market down. And to be honest, rates should never have been as low as two and a half or two and three fourths on a 30 year fixed. It wasn't needed. The housing market has been thriving the whole time without it. Rates didn't need to be held that low. But rates didn't need to come up to this. This is a government attempt to try to control inflation. That's what this is. Trying to slow things down and fix things from spiraling out of control. The problem is it's happening so fast they could accidentally damage the housing market unintentionally and they don't mean to do that. But it's happened before. I want you to focus. I want you to spend some quality time making a list of what you are going to do as a real estate agent. What are you going to do this week? Day by day by day. Plan out the next week. For example, I am doing an open house Saturday myself, and I'm training one of my newer agents on my team. Saturday and Sunday from 1 to 4. I know where I'm going to be. I focused. I've got ads and MLS. I am ready. I am intentional with what I'm going to do. What mailings am I going to be sending out? How many people am I going to be contacting? You are a business owner, and I want you to take this business seriously, very seriously. Play like you just took out a loan for $2 million to buy a McDonald's franchise. You are going to live there, probably, to protect the asset you just bought, to take that business so seriously. You will sacrifice everything else you have to make that business a success. That's how I want you to be intentional in your real estate career. I want you to try so hard or die trying that you take it that seriously. You've got to figure out what your strengths are. And I want you to be intentional as executing these things to make you listings and buyers. That's what I want you to do. I want you to focus on this. I want you to put together a plan, an action plan of what you're going to do. I will say this. Very few agents do this. They just play around with this. Well, I think I'll do an open house. Eh, the next week, I don't know if I really want to do another open house. Eh, the last one didn't work so good. 
I want you to be in the habit of consistently doing a lot of the things that you don't think will work. Because I tell you, if you do those, th those things consistently, they will work. I had an open house. I had a listing near my very beginning of my career. And I did nine open houses in a row. Nine. On, house, on open house number nine on that listing, uh, some buyers came through. They did have an agent, but they were on their way to go look at some lots to build a house. They just stopped by my open house again on the ninth week. That's a lot of open houses in a row on the same house. They loved it. I got their agent on the phone. I said, hey, you got some buyers here and they seem to love this house. And they ended up buying it. A couple nights later, she showed it to them. She got them in there by themselves. They spent some time and they ended up buying it. Since that, um, they ended up uh, using me when they sold it again, about five years after that. Um, I canvassed that neighborhood for open houses. Back then, I went door to door. I didn't knock on the doors, but I put flyers. I put a door hanger on people's doorknobs back then. This was almost 25 years ago. And a couple of them came to my open house. Some of them kept that, and I listed two houses on that street. It went on and on and on and on and on. As a result of that open house so long ago, I've sold 17 different houses directly related to the ninth open house. They work, but you have to be consistent. You got to be in the habit of it. As you do all of this, I'm going to tell you what T is. So before I tell you what the letter T is going to stand for, I want to explain what's really going on in a little different perspective. As the market shifts up, you see lots of agents get into real estate. Right here in the Midwest, in the Kansas City region, which is a very large area uh, in, here in the heartland of the country, we have thousands of real estate agents, but you get into some of these other cities in Texas, Florida, California, the East Coast, where you've got 25 to 35,000 realtors in your uh, associations. Many of these associations in the country have a record number of real estate agents right now. A record number, not just a lot more than normal, a record number of realtors. And that's great. If you are a newer agent, that's exciting because this is my dream job. I make a lot of money doing this and I have for a long time. I love real estate. I love training people. I love talking about it. It's just, it's awesome. But as a market shifts, downwards and we go into a correction, which is what we're about to see is a correction in the market, a slowdown, which means values will fall a little bit because we won't see multiple offers as much. Now we will to an extent, but not like we did. We are still operating though at almost a record low inventory. Here in Kansas City, the Midwest Heartland region, uh, we're operating right now about one month, 1 1.2 months of inventory. That is a very strong seller's market still. We have very few houses on the market. It's still like this in pretty much the whole country, but it's gonna slow down because now we don't have as many buyers as we did. As you do all of this and we go through a shift and you are positioning yourself to grow your real estate career, you are going to thrive. That's what T stands for. You are going to thrive. You're going to find yourself a very successful agent quickly because many other agents will quit. And that's something that I'm, I'm excited about. I hate to say that, but it's time to clean house a little bit. We cannot operate with a record low inventory of homes and a record high number of real estate agents. That can't work together. It's not enough, not enough houses to go around. And so because of that, you will see a lot of agents quit. Maybe not the end of this year, although many of them should, because they have nothing going on. They're not intentional at all. You don't even see them at sales meetings. They don't try. They're focused on nothing because they never put together a list of their strengths to know what it is they should be doing consistently. 
But if you do all this, and that's what my other, go back into my channel, find some other videos. At the end of this, I'm going to put two videos that'll pop up at the end. I want you to watch both of those because it's going to help you. You need help if you're a new agent right now. You need to get yourself positioned to thrive. Now, what happens coming out of a shift? Shifts are always good for one segment or another of the market. And as a market shifts down and agents quit, you'll see some inspectors quit. Uh, you could see uh, so a lot of lenders are going to quit. You're going to see a purging throughout the loan industry because lenders have made an absolute fortune over the last two years because most of the country just refinanced their loan. They didn't need us as real estate agents to give them business. They were overwhelmed with so many people refinancing their houses. But guess what, lenders? There's no more refis going on anymore, and there won't be. Everybody's locked in at rates half that. So if you're a real estate agent, get prepared for your phone to ring off the hook from lenders. They all want to take you out to coffee. <laughs> I've seriously heard from over 40 different lenders in the last three months begging me all the wonderful things they can do to help me get rich in real estate, if I'll just team up with them. And I'm like, you didn't need me the last couple years. And now you're desperate. So you're going to see a lot of lenders quit. Um, and that's fine. But the lenders who survive will thrive off this shifting market because their strengths were working with real estate agents. They've got the relationships with agents and they've been consistently, intentionally focusing on those relationships with agents. And now those lenders will thrive as the market shifts. You as a real estate agent will come out of this uh, over the next few months, six months, 12 months, laying a foundation to absolutely thrive in this kind of a market. Here's what's exciting about a real estate market. People always need housing, always. There are always people buying houses, selling houses, buying duplexes, always. You're gonna see a lot of people uh, getting into real estate investing because this is the perfect time. You know, rent, rental amounts to charge the renters as an all-time high. Landlords are loving this. As long as their people have been paying, they didn't go into forbearance or anything, they are also thriving as the stock market has been declining off its record highs, real estate on investment properties is thriving. Now, you're probably not going to see a ton of people selling um, duplexes. Why would they when you can over-rent them? That's how this works. That's how you thrive as a real estate agent in a shifting market. I hope you enjoyed this. Please check out my other videos right now. Click on the one that how to do a COI list. Uh, sphere of influence, because that has got to be one of your strengths. You know people and your friends and your family and your neighbors and your, your co-workers from your past job and your kids, parents, all everybody, everybody who knows you. They would love to use you for real estate. They would love to send you their referrals of their friends. But they have to know you are intentionally taking this career seriously. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, give this a, a like, and uh, check out the other videos.